welcome to the Little Bear White Bark Pine Seed Orchard. We're here on the Custer Gallatin National Forest. So the goal here is to have a, a seed source of blister rust resistant seeds that we can supply to the whole Greater Yellowstone area ecosystem. So it will provide seeds to the other partners. So the goal is to have these, we're getting cones now and getting some seeds, but as they continue to grow and mature, we'll have a larger seed source um, to provide seeds to grow seedlings and then be able to reforest in old burns or areas where the trees have had a hard hit. The area was prepped in 2011. They had to come out and do some clearing. It was an old, actually in 1988, it was an old clear cut and then they needed to come in and clear out the new growth that was here and remove some of the stumps and the old material. So a lot of work going into the prep of the site. And then 2013 was when they planted the first grafts here. So there are 30 different families of trees that are in the orchard here, the Little Bear Orchard. And um, they began planting in 2013 and then continued to plant through 2018. And we continue to add more trees in as we're able to get more families and replace some of our losses. The work here is important because white bark pine is a really um, pivotal part of our ecosystem. They provide um, snow retention up at higher elevations. They can live in some of the toughest terrain and you'll find them up to 12,000 feet in elevation even. They're often between, often above 8,000 feet elevation. Right now we're sitting at around 8,800 feet um, here at the orchard. But they're five needled pines and so they have five needles per fascicle. Um, a lot of the trees you'll see here, they range in height from, you know, anywhere from a foot to roughly four feet, five feet tall and trees in the field, like larger mature trees, can grow up to 70, 80 feet tall. So these trees that are here at the orchard specifically are grafts, meaning they, we collected new vegetative growth from the elite trees in the field that were found to have blister rust. And then we sent that material to the nursery in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and they grafted it onto rootstock there. And then they grew those trees for two years and then they ship them to us and we plant them here at the orchard. So they are essentially mature trees, even though they're small in stature, they can already be growing cones on them. So in the wild, it would take a tree, a white bark pine tree, about 30 years to be reproductively mature enough to produce seeds. Um, you'll see, you know, this tree is small. I even have trees in the orchard that are a foot tall and have a big cone on them. And that's because they are essentially, they essentially are the mature parent tree. These are grafts so this material was taken from the tree in the wild and then grafted onto the rootstock so it essentially is that parent tree living here at the orchard and so it's already re reproductively mature enough to produce cones. This is a white bark pine tree right here with a cone on it. Um, they were listed in 2023 under the Endangered Species Act um, as a threatened species. There's a number of reasons why they're on the decline. That includes changes in um, the environment, including the climate and fire regimes, and then um, due to some other pathogens, um, white pine blister rust, which is an introduced um, pathogen, and then also mountain pine beetle. A white bark pine can occupy habitats that other tree species cannot, and that, that's one reason why they're unique. Uh, not only high elevation, speed, uh, high elevation sites, but uh, they can move into lower elevation sites if there's not competition present. Um, and I think that's, that's really unique. Yeah, we're not making the seeds rust resistant at all. Um, it's a, resistance is found naturally within the populations. So uh, we're basically harnessing that and uh, and using that to our advantage. So we're, we're collecting from trees that have that natural population, uh, natural, that natural resistance within their population and, and harnessing that and bringing it into the seed orchard so we can grow those seedlings up, grow cones, cl uh, collect the seed, grow seedlings up that have a resistance, plant those back out in areas that need restoration. I mean, I love where they live. They live in these high elevations. They're incredibly hardy. I love, we can hear the Clark's Nutcrackers right now, just knowing that they're providing an important food source to the animals and the other species around. And I love being up in the high country and so just like wanting to preserve a species that, that inhabits that area, and wanting to see that restoration effort come to fruition is really motivating and inspiring.